In our respiratory system, there is a space between the lung and the chest wall. This space is called the pleural cavity. The pressure in the pleural cavity is called interpleural pressure or pleural pressure. The pleural pressure is normally negative, which means the sub-atmospheric pressure gradients created by the interpleural pressure enhances the expansion of the lungs during inspiration. Transpulmonary pressure is the true force acting on alveolar expansion. The transpulmonary pressure is equal to alveolar pressure minus the pleural pressure. If the pleural pressure were to increase due to pneumothorax or other complication, the transpulmonary pressure will subsequently decrease. This will lead to insufficient expansion of alveoli at the end of inspiration. On the other hand, at the end of expiration, if the pleural pressure exceeds PEEP, the transpulmonary pressure becomes negative and alveolar collapse will occur. By increasing alveolar pressure, this will lead to higher transpulmonary pressure, improving lung expansion at the end of inspiration. At the end of expiration, if PEEP exceeded pleural pressure, the transpulmonary pressure will become positive again, therefore keeping alveoli open. Many reasons could lead to the abnormal pleural pressure. For example, ARDS patient, critical ill, obese patient, patient undergoing laparoscopy surgery, etc. Monitoring the transpulmonary pressure is helpful in guiding the appropriate setting in inspiration pressure and PEEP to avoid overinflation and ectalactasis during the full respiratory cycle. Due to the difficulty of direct monitoring of pleural pressure, we use esophageal pressure to surrogate the pleural pressure because the wall of the esophagus is closely adhering to the pleural cavity. Therefore, the pressure of the esophageal wall is approximately equal to the pleural pressure. The following section is to show how to correctly place the nasogastric tube and confirm the esophageal balloon position.